president glass thank you well thank you very much jordan thank you everybody for joining us uh, this afternoon uh, i want to start today's briefing by extending my deepest condolences to the family friends and loved ones of staff sergeant omer balva who lost his life in a missile attack along the lebanon border in israel on friday here in montgomery county omer had attended charles e smith jewish day school where he was a, a friend, a student, and a graduate of the class of 2019. Uh, he was one of six students to join the Israeli Defense Force upon graduation and was known for lifting other people up and looking out for those in need. And Omar proudly served in the IDF and was recently called up for reserve duty amid the ongoing violence in Israel and in the greater Middle East. And so I want to take a moment to remember Omer and share that his memory is a blessing to all those who knew him and that we wish him power and peace as he rests. With regard to the ongoing violence in the Middle East, I want to make sure that every resident of Montgomery County knows that we are committed to ensuring that everyone feels safe and secure in our community. And that means feeling safe in school, in our neighborhoods, and when praying. And so that is especially important as escalating tensions across the world um, are putting everyone on heightened awareness. And so for this current budgetary fiscal year, the fiscal year 2024, um, the council appropriated $900,000 in funding for the nonprofit security grant program, which provides support for faith-based organizations and nonprofit facilities that are at high risk of hate and violence. Uh, tomorrow, the council will introduce another $100,000 in appropriation with, in partnership with the county executive uh, to provide additional resources for this security grant. Um, this funding will provide houses of worship and organizations with the ability to enhance security measures and for the detection and prevention of hate and bias motivated acts of violence. Hate has no home here in Montgomery County and we continue to stand for acceptance, equity, inclusion, and we want to make sure that everybody feels welcome, safe and seen here in our community. Montgomery County is one of the most diverse communities in the country, and we want to make sure that everybody feels safe living here. And while there are disagreements about what is happening um, in the Middle East, um, it is my hope and the hope of our leadership here in Montgomery County uh, that we can disagree without being disagreeable, and that the violence that we're seeing uh, in the other parts of the world, uh, do not come here. We want to make sure that everybody is welcome here and we respect everyone's differences. Um, another thing that is happening tomorrow at the council is that we are going to be receiving a briefing on the development review process work group, which was organized earlier this year with the goal of finding opportunities to improve Montgomery County's economic competitiveness through our uh, land use development process. Uh, this was a work group that was spearheaded by Maryland Delegate Leslie Lopez uh, from District 39 here in Montgomery County. And the work group included, included representatives from Montgomery County Park and Planning, the Office of the County Executive, representatives from the county council uh, and uh, other agencies and departments like permitting services, transportation, environmental protection. Uh, and in addition to it being spearheaded by Delegate Lopez, uh, it was also uh, spearheaded in the Senate by Senator Ben Kramer. 
And after meeting for four months, the work group reached consensus on 22 recommendations. Many of these recommendations include making changes to the operations at the planning department and other county departments. Um, there are some recommendations that include expanding community outreach for new project proposals, uh, for providing training uh, for the development application process, so applicants better understand uh, the processes that we have, and also to update the me memorandum of understanding between the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission and county agencies to clarify which agencies take the lead on various issues. The bottom line is that we want to streamline our processes. Uh, the Maryland National Park and Planning Commission is a hundred year old agency mandated by the state. And as we uh, grow and evolve here in Montgomery County, uh, so too should our policies and regulations. And I very much appreciate the work group for coming up with these recommendations. We will have a fuller conversation at tomorrow's council session. Um, but I believe that this is a win for residents and businesses because whenever we can take a closer look at improving our processes and growing our community, it benefits everybody. So I wanna thank again, Delegate Lopez and Senator Kramer for convening this group. Um, you know, uh, last thing uh, I wanna uh, note is with regard to um, two, two uh, unfortunate pieces of news uh, and incidents that happened last week with regard to uh, Montgomery County Police Department. Uh, what happened to Sergeant Patrick Kemp last week is unconscionable. All of us here at the council, and I know many people in our community were outraged and saddened to learn about the critical injuries sustained by MCPD Sergeant Patrick Kemp while he was working to keep our residents safe on our roadways. We are committed to doing everything we can to support Sergeant Kemp and his family as he recovers from his serious injuries. This is a horrible crime that reminds us about the life and death situations that law enforcement officers confront every single day as they bravely safeguard our community. Um, our thoughts are with him, his loved ones, and his colleagues during this extremely difficult time. Uh, I'll also note that the, uh, the individual who decided to drive his speeding vehicle into Sergeant Kemp uh, had a long track record of traffic violations. And we need to have our state partners look into uh, tougher enforcement for individuals who regularly and flagrantly uh, violate uh, some of our traffic laws because he should not have been on the road. Uh, and this is something that we have to do in order to keep our roads safe, not only for pedestrians and bicyclists, but for drivers and our law enforcement community as well. Uh, and then the last thing I'll add is uh, last week, it was also noted that MCPD officer Justin Lee was arrested on Thursday after he was indicted on multiple felony and misdemeanor counts, including uh, for assaulting law enforcement personnel on the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. While these proceedings are ongoing, it's important to note that we bring justice for law enforcement officers that are seriously hurt during altercations on January 6th, and that grave actions have consequences. Our police officers here are working every day to serve and protect our residents, um, and they are also serving and protecting our democracy. And nobody who is in law enforcement should be undermining our democratic principles not only here in Montgomery County, but anywhere in this country of ours. Uh, and so I know that this is an ongoing situation, um, and I'm confident that Chief Jones is working with his team to reaffirm the ethical standards and professional conduct expected of all Montgomery County police officers who serve our community and our country. Uh, and with that, uh, Jordan, I will turn it back over to you if there are any questions. Great, thank you, Council President Glass. Reporters, if you have any questions, note that in the chat or you can raise your hand and I'll call on you. I'll give you a few moments. Reporters, if you have any questions. Okay. 
I don't see any questions here in the chat. Going once, going twice. Okay, back to you, Council President Glass. Very good. Um, thank you again, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. We're going to have a robust conversation tomorrow on uh, the development review process and a few other things as well. Um, but the bottom line from today's conversation is we we continue to do everything we can here in Montgomery County to make our residents feel safe. And we want to make sure that we celebrate our diversity and respect our differences. Um, that's what makes us a wonderful place. And we're going to continue to, to make that happen for everybody who wants to make Montgomery County their home. Uh, so thank you this afternoon, Jordan. I'll see you later. Goodbye, everybody.